Well, welcome to the One Thing Podcast, where we all get to usher in the new age of humanity, Homo Spiritus, by practicing dancing with the one thing that individuals, communities, and countries have yet to try en masse. What's that one thing? It's the connection to the higher self part of our true self anatomy that people call by various different names. Our prime directive above all else is to make and constantly return to taut connection day in and day out, moment to moment, as our first step in dealing with life problems, rather than dealing or viewing rather life problems as things we can solve separately from taut. And in this episode, we are delighted to offer you some practical ways to uplevel your mental, emotional self-governance through the assistance of the one thing. Awesome. Perfect. Well, it always seems like there couldn't be a better time for self-governance, <laughs> um, but it, it seems particularly important that it now is a good time. So uh, principle number one is there are three principles we'll be talking about related to self-governance. Not that there are the only three, but they're the ones we're choosing to focus on in our time together. So self-governance is actually more important than government. We want to remember that we are living in a democracy that is of the people, for the people, by the people, and we are those people. <laughs> so we've talked in past episodes about how, uh, and this is really hard for a mind to get around, but if you include your heart in the uh, attempts to understand and, and, you know, just sort of get a different perspective on this, it will help. Um, but we outpicture as a collective into the world happenings, which would include in this case, let's just talk about the U.S. government because we're in the U.S., but any government, you know, replace the government that you live in or the place that you live in with your government. So how do we change that? Well, we govern first ourselves. So we we work on the divisions within ourselves so there are less divisions in the collective and and in the gov in government. We work on, you know, bringing our heart and our head and our and even our womb which is our creative fortress. We we work on bringing those into a better alignment so that we are expressing from that alignment and that integrity rather than a disjointed alignment and integrity. Um, and, and it's really important because of what David's going to say next. <laughs> <laughs> Which is that as important as, as, important as self-governance is for us as individuals, what's also important to stress is that until there is a critical mass of self-governing citizens, self-sovereign citizens, government will continue to bully its citizens, regardless of country, worldwide. We've, we've got to step into the kind of self-governance that Lori and I are talking about in this episode, not only for ourselves, but in order to ensure the kind of governance that we're intended to be supported by and aren't currently being supported by. Exactly. And this is true whether you're working for a company, um, whether it's the government, whether it's a religious group or any ideological group. <clears throat> they, those kinds of groups as of today don't really want self-sovereign um, people. You know, they don't want, whether that's employees or um, what do you call it when you're a, a part of a church? <laughs> There's a very normal. Yeah, a, a congregant or, of course, a citizen. It, it, it is important to those larger groups that that there's more, uh, there's less power than there is more power in, in the masses, so to speak. Um, then they can't be controlled or directed to their agendas and, and, you know, even manipulated at some point. I want to say something that I heard the other day, which I think is really important here, because one of the things I think that stops people from activating, and this is what has to happen, we have to activate our own sovereignty as a, as a being and take responsibility for internal self-governance. And that includes our actions and our, and our words, which end up being an external exchange. But this, the power that is required to do that is not a power that is force. It is a, it is a fluid 
flow of life force or light, you could say. So the power is a fluidity of light and not force. And once a mind gets its self wrapped around that and it, and the heart is included in that experience um there's less um fear or or you know terror really to step into a sense of self empowerment that's my experience anyway beautiful love it so we just finished unpacking principle number 1 of these three principles we wanted to touch on in this episode that self governance is more important than government governance. Principle number two is there is no self-governance other than higher self-governance. We've already proven that governance or self-governance without the one thing has run its course. It's unsustainable. It doesn't produce the results that our highest love and wisdom yearns for, and it never will because it never can. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that might be a tough pill to swallow, but <laughs> the higher self piece, this, this is why we're so, um, you know, attentive and, you know, we place a, a very strong, powerful focus on the one thing, because this is the higher self. This is the way we govern ourselves is in collaboration with our higher self. And when more people are doing that than not, then we tip the scales in favor of different governments, different businesses, different, you know, different um, groups of things that are, are running and, and, and it, it changes the, um, the fabric of those, of those groups. So principle number three is that this is going to fly in the face. I'm just going to kind of do a pre-warning here. It's going to fly in the face of many people's um, way of perceiving the world. But contrary to this prevailing opinion, nothing from history will teach us about this higher self governance, because history has mostly been about forcing people to to submit to the to the to being governed, to submit to the government, or in some cases for a long time to the crown, or you know to the to the uh, the, the the single ruling factions. So this is, it doesn't matter whether it's a country, an educational system, a religious organization, or a business, the hist, our history is weak for, for what we are talking about here and moving forward. Yes, we can learn from our hist- mistakes, for, you know, that are captured in history, but we aren't going to find our way to higher self-governance and mass in history, because it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> and this is what we're being called into is a, is a, oh, but you know, an unfolding of something that has yet to happen. And where I believe I, I this is my deep knowing is that we're at a critical tipping point where this is, is going to get to happen, but we of course need um, all hands on deck. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Indeed. And I want to reinforce what you said a little bit earlier, now that we're moving into this next part of this episode, which again, if you listen to what we're about to say from your head, higher self-governance might seem impossible. However, if you listen from your heart, you will have a sense of knowing that this is true and right, what we're going through here. And, and can I just throw one thing in there? We have over 40,000 brain cells in our heart. So it is not like we're leaving our head out of the equation. We're just including the heart and we're connecting the two so that it's a much more powerful uh, aspect of being. And just to say that same thing from a slightly different angle, yeah. <laughs> uh, because it, it, it resonates for me at certain times, is I seek a heart-informed head. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's so good. That's so good. Because we already know what a a head without the informed, uh, you know, influence of the heart has gotten us. It's gotten us to where we are today. I'm going to say another thing that's going to be uh, possibly controversial to your head, (laughs) (laughs) which is that in general, human emotions uh, can be like quicksand. One of the things I love about Chinese medicine is is its understanding that when an immune, when a human emotion is flowing through and we're not 
I mean, we're designed to have human emotions. So I'm not saying that we aren't designed to have human emotions. I'm saying that we're not designed to live in them as and and get caught in the quicksand of them. We're designed to have them flow through us. And we're not, we don't have a very strong muscle in general for that. So we're, we're, you know, we're looking at our higher self to teach us how to actually do that. And, and when we do that, there is a different sense, a different um, energy of feeling that replaces the chokehold of a human emotion. And the only way that one can have that experience is by being in direct connection with their higher self and bringing something really sticky you know, turning that over to your higher self or lifting it up or offering it or however you you use terms to define that. Maybe you have never done this before, um, but I, I use two different ways of doing it. One of them is I literally put it at the feet of what I would consider to be the source of life. And I say, here's this big, messy, tangled problem. <laughs> and I'm looking for wisdom to get my way through this and to be shown what's really more true about this emotional tangle than I seem to think is true. That's one way. The other way, and I just remembered this the other day, is that, you know, skeet shooting where they throw those pucks up and they skeet shoot and it, you know, shatters the puck. Ideally, <laughs> that, that would be a win <laughs> is sometimes when I take when I have an emotional tangled energy, I, I, I imagine it as a, as a puck and I just throw it up in the air and I imagine that it's being shattered by the light of life and that there is like now a little bit of a, a scintillating waterfall of that energy because it's being transformed by the light and fed back to me in a higher serving form. So there's lots of ways to do this. Those are just two fun, you know, considerations. Um uh, where, where am I here? Uh, let's see quicksand. Oh yeah. So, okay. So, so yeah. So our emotions, let me just get back on track here. Our emotions are designed to be a barometer for where we're actually at. If we're at meaning in our connection with our higher self, if we're way off base of being lost in, in quicksand of a, an emotional tangle, we're not connected because when we're connected to our higher self, that there would be much less of a tendency, if at all, for that to happen. Um, and also being swallowed by the emotions is not helpful either. So we don't want to be disconnected from our emotions. We don't want to be swallowed by our emotions. It's like the Goldilocks, you know, there's that uh, Goldilocks place, that middle road, that center point. And there's lots of ways to say that, but it's the place in between the two far away um, opposites that we're looking for. And that place is connection. And there are times when I have to do that like a, a thousand times an hour <laughs> if I'm really working through something sticky. And there's other times I just do it, you know, maybe once an hour. It doesn't, that part doesn't matter. My point in saying that is that you, if you do it once and it doesn't work, then do it again. That, that's the thing. And what I mean by do what I'm saying by doing it again is reconnect and reconnect and come back to center and ask and, you know, re reach for um, yielding to the wisdom that is your higher self and the intelligence that can actually flow through your brain and your own mind in, in a way that it's much more serving than our limited mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. So we're really talking about stepping into an even deeper and fuller and more consistent practice of unpacking the wisdom of our higher self. Or again, as we keep stressing, whatever terminology you want to use for that higher love and wisdom. The sacred matter, sacred matter that makes up our body, the, the physical matter, the physical form, the physical ingredients, the, uh, you know, electrons and protons and neutrons and atoms and molecules and cells and all, all the way up to the full body, all the way down to the things that make up those subatomic particles that this is, this is sacred matter. It's not, uh, it's not matter that's separated from source. It's sacred matter that makes up our body and unpacking the wisdom of our higher self is on is 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 attending to the sacred matter that makes up our body in consultation with the true connected self that we are and that is the essence 
of what spiritual or higher self-governance really is. Yeah, so beautiful. And if we have, you know, if we're, if we're, if we live as a sack over full of false beliefs and paradigms that aren't serving and disempowering, you know, ways of seeing ourselves in life, there's no room for that 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 matter that that david is is mentioned i mean it's there it's just kind of covered over with like a wet blanket so our job is to is to take those layers off and reveal and activate and awaken the the atoms that carry this life force and this wisdom and this love that's already inside every single one of us more than we ever could need and honestly the only way that we individually and collectively will find our way out of of this this mess that we're in, you know, the the narcissism, the entitlement, the um, the the lower version of of morals and ethics and civility, and you know, none of that is higher Which is self being moralistic. Right? right, none of that is is higher self governance. Governance that is lower self entrapment, really, um, and so what David was saying about, you know, reaching for this, this uh, sacred matter, you know, in and around us, which it it's constantly, you know, vibrating in and around us, uh, we'll never be able to govern ourselves. And, and the more of us that do choose this level of self-governance, um, the more governments and groups and companies and everything that makes up a world that works and thrives for all, uh, will be available. Mm -hmm. Or to summarize that in a two word sentence, matter matters. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> More than we've been led to believe. <laughs> indeed, indeed, yeah. indeed. Beautifully, beautifully said. So when we are connected with higher self governance, and this is this is really important for a lot of people who have been overly rules bound meaning meaning uh deferring self governance to rules rather than living quote unquote rules not because they're the rules but because they're they're really felt and experienced deep within ourselves um the the when we're connected with higher self government governance it's impossible to make non-serving choices mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a law of the universe, what David just said. It's I, I like to um, make a distinction between principles and rules. So rules are usually things that, you know, humans make up. And principles are things that we can't uh, avoid by being on the planet, like the laws of gravity and, you know, the laws of cause and effect and that kind of thing. So if we live by principles and our higher self, our, this higher governance will teach us how to do that on every subject all day long, if we ask. And so, um, and you can do this with or without a church, with or without governments telling you what to do, with or without a boss telling you what to do. I mean, you, you can just go inside and constantly be requesting understanding uh, how, you know, to be shown, help to see. I, I, one of the lines I like, and David probably has something similar is, you know, sh show me um, how to see this differently. Show me how to feel about this differently. If my feelings are all, you know, my emotions, like we mentioned earlier, are all wrapped up about it. You know, I am willing to see this differently. Differently and, and we, meaning through the eyes and the heart of higher love and wisdom. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. And it's, um, it's important to ask for that because if we don't, then we're going to rely on our head and our head is always going to be about past programming and we don't get much from that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So again, just to reiterate something else we, uh, Lori mentioned earlier, this is why we can't look to history for answers about higher self-governance. Um, lo looking to taught the one thing instead of external authorities or rebelling against external authorities or our inner critic instead of looking to taught is the one thing we've still not 
tried en masse. Yes, there have been and continue to be some individuals who are doing this, but it's still the one thing we've not tried en masse. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, one could come about this from any spoke in the wheel. So it, it all leads to the same center, which is the truth of love and and goodness, right? Uh, so if you're Christian, you might call on Jesus or Mother Mary if you're from the Catholic, even though she's more than just a Catholic um, support. <laughs> she's the uh, divine feminine archetypal mother, so she's available to everyone. But maybe the angelic realm is something that you relate to. Reach for what feels uh, resonant and connected, connectable in your own heart. Yes. And Similarly, if you're Jewish, you can call upon the angelic realm as well, or you can call upon Shekhinah, which is the feminine principle of the Godhead. It's the it's Shekhinah in Judaism is somewhat analogous to the Holy Spirit in Christianity. Yeah. And if none of that religious stuff works for you, if it turns you off more than pulls you close, maybe it's nature that nourishes you. Um, you know, call on a tree or walk in nature or, you know, as you it, maybe birds flying make you feel a sense of freedom or a sense of peace or, you know, you, you have to find your your symbols and your and your connection points. Um for no other reason than to connect you to your higher self. So um, just maybe if you're not sure what that is, the first place to start is to be in the inquiry about what makes you feel most connected to the, 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 the goodness of life, to the higher, the higher energy that is love and wisdom. Yes. And to piggyback on that, if, if none of the, examples that we've just provided or your thing, we're not trying to force you into anything. We're trying to encourage you to simply call on that which is bigger, meaning more loving and wiser than your seemingly separate self, whatever you call that. And that that call calling on that which lights the stars in the sky and pumps your blood. It's the life force that we're calling on. And you get to call it, each of us get to call it whatever name resonates most for us and that inspires us to remain more and more consistently co connected with higher love and wisdom. Exactly. And if if there's anything that stands in the way of that inspiration that David just described, then it doesn't mean you're wrong or bad or can't, don't, you know, can't figure it out. It just means that's an energy um, that is ready to be removed or released from your system so that you maintain a regular, uh, consistent connection and feeling of inspiration. And the thing to know is that when you're connected to this life force, it it, it, life force is always about good. It's just brokenhearted people that do things that aren't helpful or un, that are unserving. Um, but life itself, uh, it, that's a life force that is loving and benevolent and has, has our good, you know, uh, at, at, is holding good for us. And we're the ones who have to kind of make the connection in order to receive the good. It, the only problem really is our denial of it or our. Uh, you know, turning away from it or exclusion of it or um, fear of it or, or just, you know, insistence and rebellion and staying separate from it, which really ends up, I, I have that thing, this rebellious thing. <laughs> so that's why I can say that. <laughs> um, but once again, not to be like a broken record, but, uh, you know, we learn by repetition, the only way to find our way through whatever, um, issues we have in our life, whatever messes we perceive to be in the world is through constant connection and then making our, you know, choosing our thoughts and our words and our actions based on the guidance of that higher love and wisdom, which will always be good. It will always contribute in a good way. And that's, that's our only way into higher self-governance. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And so we want to wrap up this episode with three really very simple, at least simple to articulate 
maybe not as simple to practice all the time, but simple to articulate uh, takeaways. And the first of those is to turn to your higher self and ask what it means to access higher self-governance day in and day out. Ask to be shown how, uh, the, how that, that process of, of, of turning to higher self-governance and accessing higher self-governance affects the collective, affects all of us, affects humanity in ways that nothing else can really do. Yeah. Beautiful. That's so important. And, and then once you make that connection and you ask, you know, to be shown, be demanding of your higher self, ask and even command to be moved into right action, you know, integrious action, inspired action from, and while maintaining, uh, that connection so that you're 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 making all of your choices from that consciousness from that higher intelligence that higher wiser level of consciousness indeed and the third takeaway is as with all taught practices the one thing practices this is a muscle practice living in alignment with whatever comes through for you Practice remembering to ask so that you have clarity about what comes through for you that you can be in alignment with. That's the third takeaway. Right. I mean, you have, here's the thing, you have the rest of your life to get better and better with this practice. And that's the purpose of a life actually. <laughs> so, um, you know, you don't have to worry about getting it all together by next week. That's for sure. Um, so on that happy note, what we will talk about in our next episode, which will be perfect on the heels of this one that we, ju that we just are um, in conversation about is the wily and sneaky ways of disconnection. So until then, remember to dance with your better half. The one thing, whatever you choose to call that, um, just make sure you feel it in your heart so that you can keep living more and more fully as homo spiritus. 